friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. As we close out the week here, I want to tell you a story about this little cross. And I also want to share with you a very concerning email that came in from a longtime Healthy American about how it appears that the government is paying veterinarians to shut down their offices or reduce their hours. And certainly what is behind this renewed push for the rabies, as I call it, I've been exposing that over a period of several videos. And I've had more than one holistic veterinarian reach out to me. And I want to share with you in just a moment where you can get the information that I've been compiling regarding uh, veterinarians that are not going to be imposing and inflicting these harmful practices upon your uh, lovely animal family members. We are still compiling that. So if you know of someone in your area, please email support at thehealthyamerican.org. We would like to build out that list so that more and more people can learn about it. And I am going to first start with a short message from the sponsor. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll dive into this troubling uh, trend that's going on with some veterinarians. So let's do this. Let's talk about safeguarding your wealth with gold. And this is over here at noblegoldinvestments.com. Remember, you can call the experts at 877-646-5347. Get all of your questions answered. There's no guarantee of any kind. There's always a risk of investment, but uh, listen to your all American expert from noblegoldinvestments.com because there's bad turbulence ahead. The economy appears to be a minefield right now and ready to detonate and destroy the wealth and dreams of the unprepared. There are bank failures. There's something called de-dollarization, debt, and amidst all of the chaos, there is a beacon of hope that emerges. And take a look here. This is Kevin Sorbo. You probably know. Whoops. You probably know him. Uh, he is a Christian actor. He's the screen legend. Hercules, and he's an outspoken activist for the people. So with his economic crisis toolkit that you can go right here, you're going to click on Sorbo Master Class. This was crafted in partnership with the experts at Noble Gold. And so Sorbo is on a mission to help everyday Americans navigate the coming nightmare. So this is a shockproof toolkit, basically. And this is your compass for the turmoil with recession-proof strategies, inflation-busting techniques, and opportunity seizing skills to help you not just survive, but thrive in any upcoming bedlam. So if you feel this crisis is going to threaten to derail your financial future, you can now stay on track and emerge stronger than ever. And the best part is that this shield of knowledge is yours absolutely free. Don't become another casualty. You can enlist in Sorbo's Wealth Warrior ranks today and arm yourself with the tools and tactics you need to protect your hard-earned assets. So go to noblegoldinvestments.com, sign up for this free economic crisis toolkit. Click there. You'll get all the information that you need. And I will also have a link for you in the description box below. Friends, I have been so troubled by many of your emails coming in about the very tragic circumstances that you found yourself in being denied veterinarian care, not allowing, uh, not being able to have your animals be boarded or groomed or uh, go in and out of the United States unless they had a certificate of rabies. And I talked about that before because there was someone that I know who was, uh, how do I say, being creative in their own paperwork and they were creating a certificate. And when they went to submit it to the dog groomer who wouldn't see the animal, uh, they saw a typo and it said rabies certificate. So I use that as a little sort of tongue in cheek and it's no laughing matter, but I've given you several ways that you can avoid this. Number one, if your animal cannot tolerate it, your veterinarian is required to give you a waiver. And if you're bringing your animal to the vet, obviously they're ill or you're concerned about their health. So why in the world would you subject them to that unnecessary additional intervention? I've done many videos about the whole concept of this rabies and how it is 
rare and unlikely that anyone is going to be harmed by it. And then I gave other scenarios as to call the vet in advance or have the vet come to your home or make sure you're the last or the first appointment. There are so many ways to get out of it. And that is all over at my Substack. And that is peggyhall.substack.com. And I have a link for you in the description box of this video. And I certainly hope that you're going to avail yourself of this free information that I have spent thousands of hours compiling along with my assistant. And our goal is to give you written analysis of these videos so that you'll be armed with all the information that you need. So when it comes to the, the rabies, you can click on resources. I have it here, easy to find. Let's talk about rabies. You click on that and there near the end of it, oh, there's my little teddy bear as a little tiny puppy when I found her abandoned in the bushes in a rough part of town. And then there she was in her prime. And now she is at eternal rest. And it is one of the most difficult things I've ever been through. So here are my suggestions on avoiding these so-called requirements. You can find that here. I'm compiling a list of these veterinarians. And some of you have pointed out, Peggy, not all of them um, are in favor of no cocktails at all, but you know, I, I don't know all of them personally. It's just me and my assistant trying to do our best to bring you information. It's up to you to vet the vets, all right? And let us know what you find. What I wanna share with you is this very troubling email that came from a lovely, healthy American that's been on board from the beginning. And she writes, and she says, hi, Peggy. I'm wondering if you made a video or Substack about the government paying veterinarians to shorten their hours, to reduce their availability and to not take on new patients. Or did I just imagine that? Well, Cynthia, oh, well, that's all right. I don't think she minds if I say her name. She's been very active in the uh, freedom movement here. I have not made that video, but I'm making it now. But I will say that many of our healthy Americans have noticed that as well. So I wanted to share your very concerning email so others could learn about it and then chime in and tell me what their experience has been. So here's what she writes. She says, why is it that all of a sudden veterinarians are in an ivory tower and we have to wait weeks or months for our pets checkups or exams? Now, I'm just going to put in my own commentary that many years ago, and I'm not giving any medical advice, of course, but many years ago, I personally decided to not do a regular checkup. Now, that may be a choice that's different for you, but my animals were healthy up until like the very last end of their life. And sadly, they both did have lymphoma, but they were at such an advanced age that I was not going to do anything in terms of the, you know, traditional treatments that were being offered. And they lived, you know, 19 years old for a cat and 14 years old for a large dog, which is like five or six years longer than the anticipated uh, life expectancy. So I personally wasn't of the mind of, and I don't do it for myself either as a human, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now you may have a completely different view and that's okay. But I just wanted to make that comment so that those that are listening to her email, um, you understand that those are, that's her viewpoint. Okay. She goes on to say, or worse, if there is a critical health concern or an emergency we can't get our pets seen on weekends or after hours anywhere, except in what is called a VCA. And that is the Veterinarian Clinics of America. I believe that's what it stands for, animal clinic anymore. Basically, it is like a big box, um, you know, veterinary clinic. And they're all over, at, well, they're, at least they're all over California. I don't know if they're all over the United States. And they hire vets to come in and staff, but it's not like it's the veterinarian's own practice. And so you can anticipate how that changes things as well. If you go back again, you don't see the same vet, like, you know, just other concerns that might come from having sort of visiting veterinarians that aren't really that completely connected and involved in the practice. Draw your conclusions from that. She writes, VCA is known for its astronomical bankrupting ER bills, because it is an emergency vet, and the high turnover rate of its staff, making it difficult to impossible to cultivate familiarity between any one veterinarian, your pet, and yourself. 
Therefore, we no longer get to experience consistency, attention to detail of a treatment trajectory and the personalized care that comes from those firmly forged connections with our care providers who have thorough knowledge of our pet's health history, treatment plans, et cetera. Peggy, please help me understand why navigating the world of veterinary care has turned into a Kafka-esque twilight zone the last few years. I don't even feel like I'm allowed to ask this question or express concerns or even make requests or to even have any kind of knowledge based on many years of my caring for my pets, she says. I know I'm not the only one experiencing this. There's a huge number of people complaining about the same thing. She writes, today I got barked at by a veterinarian's secretary telling me that once I bring my pet there, the vet will make all of the decisions as she sees fit for my pet, regardless of my concerns. Meaning that whether or not I wanted my own cat sedated or not, for an x-ray or getting blood samples, they were going to do whatever they felt was necessary once my pet was there without my consent. Let me just stop there for a moment. This is outrageous. Have any of you gone through that? I am so grateful to say that I have had caring vets with my animals up until their uh, final day and this is something that I was always grateful for. I did have a vet that retired and that was quite a blow to us and our furry family, but it is important. Just like I talk about making sure that your own medical emergency uh, potentialities are covered, that you have things in writing, that maybe you've already uh, contacted the urgent care or ERs around you to make sure that you will be seen without be being discriminated against. And I do have documents over at the healthyamerican.org that you can fill out and get notarized. And I have it for every state compiling all of the laws that protect you from being discriminated against at a hospital or any place of public accommodation. So if you're interested, that's over at healthyamerican.org. You're going to click under um, products and classes, I think, and you'll see what we have available for you. But that just dovetails with this. Make sure that you are well informed as to your veterinarian, what they're requiring, and maybe have a mobile vet that you could also reach out to that by and large, ideally is not going to be forcing all of these things because you're not going into their practice where the you know, powers that shouldn't be are insisting that your animal is a human pincushion because it might be a danger to other animals. Well, if the vet comes to your home, then there's no danger. And you might point out, well, Peggy, the vet might be scratched or bitten. They already are pincushions, sad to say. Maybe not all of them, maybe not the holistic and the mobile vets, but by and large, the vets and the vet staffs, my understanding is that they already have been inoculated against the big bad rabies. All right. Let's go on with Cynthia's email, which I so appreciate that she wrote. And I thank all of you for your emails. I can't reply to everybody personally, but please know that between me and my assistant, we read all of them and we appreciate you reaching out. That's a part of a huge part of our community is educating and supporting and taking action. So she writes, that she was barked at by the veterinarian secretary saying that they were gonna do whatever they felt necessary. And then she prefaced it with, let me make one thing very clear to you. Oh, that rubs me the wrong way, how about you? So Cynthia goes on to write, she then changed my urgent care appointment to the following day. It's like, when I reminded her that this was an urgent situation, she said, well, then you can take your cat to the VCA, which is the emergency vet. She said, what in the world is going on? If these veterinarian clinics are so slammed, why does it seem like they all take Mondays off and Fridays off? Sometimes both days, if not both days, and at least one that they're, it's always a non-work day for them. And they all end their day sharply at five. They never work on weekends. She said, if you've been taking your pet there for years and your pet suddenly is ill, you're going to have to go to an emergency clinic. It seems like your own veterinarian is not going to be willing to help you. That's the way it is in Butte County, at least. All right, that's in Central California. 
So I wrote back and I said, I really appreciate your email. I'm going to share it. <laughs> I said anonymously, but I don't think she minds uh, because that is exactly what's happening. I said, I truly believe that there is an all out war on animals. And this is part of the push to prevent people from caring for them and being able to afford having them. I'm glad that there are more and more vets speaking out against this. So that was my response. And then of course, I, as I showed you, I have my growing list and I hope that you will help me add to that of veterinarians or even online. Like some of you have YouTube veterinarians that you learn from, please send that to me as well. And we will continue to build out that resource list. This is something that is so close to my heart. I've been in animal rescue for years. This is the first time in my life, in my many decades here on earth that I have not had a little furry family member. And it is so empty. And so I just feel bereft. I have always had multiple animals in my life. And my husband and I are all time high was five and then we were down to two. And I, I just feel that when Elsie passed away, Teddy bear, she just went quickly right, right after that. It's very, very tragic. And I am going to continue to speak out against our animal's health. I'm not a veterinarian. I'm an animal lover. I've been an animal advocate. I've been, I've worked in humane education in the earlier part of my life, I volunteered at animal shelters, which they're not like that these days. They're, they are, they many of them actually, I speak in California alone, uh, make it so difficult for you to even volunteer there. And they were shut down, you know, during all of the fake stuff. And it, it is so troubling to me. So I'm gonna to continue to advocate for these innocents. So she writes back to me, Cynthia wrote back and said, thank you so much. I have shared this um, with the mobile vet that is struggling against all odds to set up a clinic here. The vet has been discriminated against at every turn and absolutely attacked by our local governance at every opportunity. Is that horrible? She writes, it's like our country doesn't want options for its own citizens and their pets. This mobile vet clinic has been our only option after hours and on weekends. And I've been told that they are a literal answer to prayer. Uh, it, they are like an answer to a prayer of mine that has lasted for years now. So she, um, anyway, she said, I, I'm looking forward to your uh, video about this. So there we have it. And yes, it seems like more and more of these egregious, unnecessary, illegitimate, immoral, unthinkable, unethical requirements are being inflicted upon our animals. I am absolutely astonished at the cost of vet care. I used to joke with my husband, especially over the last few years, I said, if anything ever happens to me, do not take me to a hospital, I'm not going to an ER, I'm not going to an urgent care, just take me to the vet. And we kind of had a little joke about it, not really for the price, but because I trusted my vet. And you know, I'm, I'm saying this jokingly because I don't know that they're licensed to practice on humans, but I'm sure they could stitch something up or give you a cast or whatever if needed. But that was you know, my low level of trust and um, belief in the mainstream medical merry-go-round. And then to hear that this is going on at the veterinarian level, it's absolutely just heartbreaking. I don't have horses, but I know people who do. And these very large animals also have reactions to these cocktails. So there are horse, uh, you know, parents that will get their animal tested so that they don't have to continue to go undergo these very uh, debilitating interventions. I'll just put it that way. So let's continue to speak out against this. I'm so grateful to all of you that are sending me links and information. I will be bringing you an interview with a holistic vet who is doing a lot of education. And I think what's happening with a lot of doctors as well, medical doctors, people doctors, and animal doctors is that because they're having the pressure put upon them, they're actually letting their medical license go. And they are now into advocacy and education and holistic methods. So I welcome all those approaches. And as soon as I can get that video set up and uh, scheduled and uh, recorded, I will publish that for you so that we can get 
information from these veterinarians themselves. Thank you everybody for your very warm response to the coverage that I'm doing about rabies and all of our precious pets. And I wanted to share with you this very touching story with this little cross. So I've done videos on this channel and on my Living Swell channel, which is here on YouTube and it's Living Swell with Peggy Hall. That's all about uh, health and wellness and well-being. And we don't talk really too much about current events. We take a break from all of that. So it's quite uh, much more about positive impact and just feeling better and taking care of yourself emotionally and physically. And so I've been speaking about these heavenly hugs, which I believe are God's way of letting us know about our departed loved ones that all is well and all will be well. And there are things that certainly are not just mere coincidences. I'm going to be bringing you another video on that next week, but I wanted to just share with you that um, a couple of days after the passing, we had Elsie and then a week later, um, my girl, Teddy, and you can imagine we were just bereft. We're so distraught. And we were together with a couple of friends and they have been through the same thing. So they brought us a lot of comfort. And uh, as we were leaving, we uh, David looked down at the ground and here on the ground, he saw this cross. Now, this is pretty amazing to me. It, it's a little beaten up or something just there on the sidewalk. Like, what are the chances that just this just showed up? Next week, I want to share with you, because I want to line them up here on my computer, what my phone delivered. I'm on an iPhone, and when I swipe to get to the homepage, I have a couple of things on there. Like I've got, uh, just on my homepage, it has... Um, the way I have it set up, it's got my nav, it's got the weather, it's got the date, and then it has photos like, oh, here are your photo memories. And then you can click on it and then it starts giving you kind of a slideshow of photos that they compiled. Wait until I share with you in an upcoming video, these heavenly hugs that I got on a day when I was feeling particularly distraught, sorrowful, just excruciating, overwhelmed, and loss and emptiness and all of those things that accompany our losses, whether of our animal family members, our human family members, those of you that are going through a health crisis, a financial crisis, relationship crisis, you might find that you have to move, you're about to lose your home. There are so many things that people are facing, losing businesses, um, all sorts of hardships that we face. And uh, Pastor David and I have been offering a grief support group, group as well. And I'm so grateful to those of you that have been a part of that. Uh, next week, I've got so many cards and letters I want to share with you. Next week, I'll share some of these with you as well. Oh, what the heck? I'll just go ahead and read this one right now. And it says, Dear Peggy, this is way overdue to thank you for everything you have done for me personally, for my sanity, and for our country, and for all people. You're such a beacon of light. Thank you. Strength and hope through all of the tumult of these past few years. Thank God for you. I'm so glad you answered God's call and helped so many people to keep their jobs and you helped them with their loved ones. You helped with their healthcare choices. She said, I used to watch so many videos and end up in the spin cycle until one day I stopped watching all of those with all of their false promises and the timelines. And now I'm down to pretty much just you and one or two others. I look forward to your videos every day. Your positive attitude and perseverance through struggles and challenging times are so uplifting and has helped me so much. She writes, oh, thank you. She says, I love how smart you are to see through the lies and connect the clots. God gave you some great discernment powers. And I absolutely love your snark and occasional rants too. She writes, I lost my mom in March in a rather traumatic way in an adult family home. And so I've joined your grief life after loss sessions. I missed the first one, but since they're recorded, I was able to see them and then also come to the second one live, which I enjoyed and I found very helpful, especially your tips and activities dealing with guilt and all of the what ifs. So that's one of the sessions that we cover. She wrote, I love the idea of writing a letter and I plan to do so 
very soon. So we have several activities in our grief group to help people just kind of process and come to terms and see, you don't get over your grief. You don't like move on, but you have to figure out a way to live with it. And that's what we do it together, helping each other. And all of that is recorded if you want to watch it. It's no no, long, no longer live, but in a way, it's kind of good to go back and just watch it at your own time with all the activities. I'll, I'll leave a link for you. She said, I'm so very sorry to hear about your losses. It sounds like you've made all of the right choices. And please know that you and Pastor Dave are helping more people than you will ever know, I'm sure. Your daily ray of sunshine and hope warms my heart. God bless you warmly, Jennifer. Thank you so much for everyone. Like I say, I have a whole stack of cards and letters that have been flooding in along with the emails. And I will be responding to everyone because your caring is what has helped me get through. Of course, I do pray for God's strength and courage, but I believe that he uses you and, uh, you know, he uses people to demonstrate his love here on earth. And I really felt it. Thank you everyone for being on board as we close out this week. Remember, I'm here Monday through Friday. Don't wait for a notification. YouTube's not going to send it. In fact, they're going to unsubscribe you. So please resubscribe, share the video with anyone you know that is struggling with these veterinarian issues. And please email me support at thehealthyamerican.org if you are struggling in this area or if there are other videos that you would like me at uh, topics that you would like me to cover in an upcoming video. Get the free information, peggyhall.substack.com. And then I look forward to seeing you next week in an upcoming broadcast.